Hi, it's David Shumi at Fixer Frame in Mount Cravat. Now, I'm broadcasting you to, to you today because I've got a slightly different uh, jersey that we're framing, and I wanted to go into a bit of detail with how we use the spacing and different things like that, because this one is a little bit different. I'll show you in a moment. Uh, and before I forget, if you want to learn how to do picture framing, we've always got things at framersclub.com, or pictureframeclass.com or there is a link from fixerframe.com.au where you can get our special jersey frame training. So uh, enough of the plug, let's dive right in, have a look what we're up to today. We've got this uh, relatively large size um, jersey. It is from the uh, Queensland Samoan Junior Rugby, uh, Junior Rugby Union and we're doing it for one of the sponsors uh, Hastings Deering, which we're using their colours today, which we're going to have a look at shortly. But part of the reason for showing you this jersey and turning on the recording while we're going is because it's slightly unusual in terms of the shape, and often those sort of shaped jerseys that really hug the body nowadays are framed a little bit differently in terms of how we hold them into the frame. If you ever need any framing, by all means, jump in and see us at Fixer Frame in Brisbane. Otherwise, you can always get hold of me online, leave a comment uh, if you've got questions, leave a comment underneath this video. I'll tend to get in and have a look at those. Sometimes I can answer those live, but otherwise I always come back and look at those comments and answer those questions. So today we're looking at a jersey with a mat board. You might hear things like we've got compressors going off out the back, we might have phones going off, might have even people, couriers, things coming through, because we are streaming live from our frame workshop, and I just thought I'd show you this part of it. So we'll see how we go. I'm going to turn the camera around and pop it onto the table, but uh, I'll bring it back up again if they've got anything to show you that we can't see actually happening down there on the table. So just give me a sec, we'll turn this around and pop it down so you can see what's going on. Yeah, so that, that should be pretty good. Like you, you'll get a bit of a bird's eye view about about how we're how we're actually doing this framing today. Like what I've got here, this is one of these um, quite elastic, or they're quite a tough elasticated uh, uh, jersey. This is actually pretty big. Like this is a four XL, so it's a massive massive shirt. Uh, but Queensland Samoa Junior Rugby Union. And uh, this is being framed for, say, this uh, Hastings Deering, the sponsor. So they want to put this up, proudly show that they sponsor this team. So first up, it's getting this thing into the frame and pinned and flat. And so to get that shape happening, we've got a few uh, things I've, I've drawn just with a pencil. This is a piece of foam board that I've cut to, to fill inside this piece. And... I've basically traced along, I've made some marks on there already, I've traced along and made a couple of little lines that we're going to cut along. I'm just going to put a bit of board down so that we can trim that. Because a couple of things, first up we're going to actually have the neck and so out of that neckline I just cut a, a little half sort of circle here and the reason for that is, is I come back, it's a little bit blunt, we might need to a little bit of a sharper knife. Bear with me, we'll cut this one off. Hopefully that will be a little bit sharper. Just feel it biting into the foam there. Yeah, there we go. So this little half uh, or quarter circle kind of cut, this is part of the liner that's gonna go in the neck. And I'm just going to use that to make the other, the other side. Use that as a guide and a template. Could draw it, but I'm just going to cut around the shape. So that enables me to get this little neckline. Now, the top part here, the shoulders do slope on an angle. So we're going to cut that straight through. And this is just to make, at this stage, a filling board that we're going to use on the inside. Now, I take that piece and I put it on the other side there. It is pretty right to this, um, this line that I'd drawn on there earlier. But it's just we want to make that symmetrical. And now down the side, this is where this cut 
is rather, un, it's a slight, it's got a sort of parabolic kind of curve to it. So I'm gonna freehand it, uh, but I'm gonna use the template that I cut off this side to mark the other side. So just, I'm gonna head straight down this line and then just follow the curve. where I've basically cut that side of the, the jersey outline. And I'm gonna use that piece, I'm gonna flip this bit over, use it on the other side to make a template that I can trace around on that other side. So I'm gonna come down there, just check that out, make sure that it's, it's symmetrical. So that's the line we're gonna cut down this side. So I'm just going to follow that again. Now, you might cut slower or with a scalpel. I've been cutting with knives for a lot of years, so I'm just pretty good at just following a line, fairly easy freehand. So I've cut out these two pieces, which are pretty much identical from either side, which has given us this kind of scalloped shape that is going to go inside that shirt and hopefully get it to the right size. Now I don't know, it might need some trimming, but this is live, so we'll see how we go. Yeah, there's always ch different challenges with framing different items of sports clothing and memorabilia. It is a great way to, uh, it is a great thing to display your, uh, your team's pride. Now we're going to have to get a bit of, it's quite a, quite a stretch on this, so hopefully we're going to be able to get it in there without actually damaging the board or the jersey at this stage. I want, to get, I want to get that in there. Might have to make it in two pieces, which is something that we can do if we, if we need to get up into it. In fact, I might even do that. I'm going to take this in half. Just the tension that's in there is a little bit greater and I just don't want to damage it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a cut up the middle of it. I want to do this in two sections. I just want to find the central point. One thing you notice is I always cut along the back edge of any ruler. The edge with the measurements on is thin and usually designed for measuring only. Don't really want to be cutting down the measuring line. So I'm going to make that in two halves like this. And that should just make it a bit easier for me to get this inside the, the shirt. You know, some people make that quite straight, but this, this one, I want it to go right up into the corner of it so that we can really get the point of the sleeve right. And I want it to hold this, this sort of curved line that they've got naturally built into the, into the shirt. So the other piece I'm going to pop in the other side. So often we use one piece for this, but in this example I've split that. You can always put it back together again inside. Just want to check where it's going. That's really, really good. That's sitting rather nicely there. We've got enough. I'm gonna put a little bit of hinging tape just to hold that board back together again. This is just a bit of the acid-free uh, P90 tape. And I figure it's not gonna do any harm. And it's actually gonna help hold these two pieces in alignment. Not that they're really gonna come up too much. They might, they might fold a little bit. But when we start getting into pinning this jersey down or putting any uh, stretch onto it, we might actually want to have that join just aligned so that we don't get any sort of mark there. I'm going to put a little bigger bit up inside under the collar where I'd cut it there. Again, this is just to join back together the piece that I'd taken apart into two sections. But yeah, I want to put a little bit of tension at some point to hold these. So sleeves in this example, we are not uh, being too concerned about the uh, other sponsors on the sleeves. 
Sometimes we'll fold the, the sleeves down to actually show all sponsors, but in this example, the important one for us is this big one in the middle, so we need to show that quite well. And on the base, I'm gonna put some pins just to get this held into position. And then these, uh, this piece on the inside, I was debating whether to actually fold it up and put it put it inside, which is what we might do. I just want to see if there's any any seam there. We're going to probably fold that underneath. So I'm using uh, some uh, rustless uh, rustless stainless steel wedding and lace pins. These are good because they don't actually uh, corrode and do damage to things that you're framing. So very useful for uh, framing needleworks and other uh, fabric pieces where you need to be able to pin into something and have a, um, a rustless solution. So I just put a couple, couple of pins in the corner there really to hold that bottom piece. And I probably want to put something up here near the top just for a second to see where, whether I can get that, that logo right up to this corner. I'm going to put a pin around the side. Where you pin is largely up to you. We, we will experiment with how the pins go to get the best look. And again, usually uh, less is probably better than too many, but you, you need to work how you're going to pin that jersey into place. I'm not putting too many in this one. I'm just going to get this pin. I want that, that little corner of that logo just to start there it sits quite well I'm not too worried about what's happening under the sleeves I just really wanted that shape I don't want something sometimes people stretch them right out so they get stretched too extreme and I don't particularly like it when the when the jersey I mean I like the jersey to look flat but I don't necessarily want it to be really tautly stretched and another thing about that is when you do have um, fabric stretched in any way, shape or form, you are actually putting it under stress. So mostly with things that are fabric, you don't particularly want to have, a little loose thread there, we're gonna take that just off. Um, you don't want to have uh, the, uh, every time you pull a piece of fabric, it actually weakens it along its warp and weft where you put it through it's like actually putting a little knife into into a piece and there's actually a little tag in there too which we're going to get that out now we may we may put a stitch we'll see whether that one comes back out they've put it this is either off a pricing tag there we go some people use the little pricing tags you see how that has a little uh, T end on it. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll put it on something dark. Maybe it'll show up a little bit better. What have we got there? I'll just hold it up on this bit of cut. So that is like one of your uh, fabric pricing tags. Now a lot of picture framers will use actually a pricing gun that shoots these to uh, stitch down a jersey in a commercial sense because it is a synthetic plastic it's not necessarily going to do much damage and the only thing i find a problem with it is it leaves the actual device that puts the pin in leaves quite a hole so you don't really want to put holes which again are weakening things uh, in the fabric unless you you really have to see so yeah, a few bits of stitching hanging out we can clean that up later when we come to do it so this piece on the bottom you can see it just folds a little bit at the moment. I just got to flip it over. I'm going to fold this up and back on itself. Like sometimes that could tuck inside, so we could tuck it in there. But I think it's going to be just as easy in this example to fold it back. Some people leave it hanging down, but I don't particularly want that white uh, piece showing. So I'm just going to pin it up at that level, and we'll, we're going to put some pins. I'm just going to uh, skew pin this in into that backing through the outside. I don't want the pin to come up and out the front of the board. 
So I'm just going on a shallow angle and it's really there just to hold that up so that when we put it on the backing, we haven't got this piece hanging down underneath the front here because I'd like that to be nice and clean. And so what they're doing, they're putting this on a black backing. So this is just a large uh, matte black uh, acid-free backing board. The shirt is going to get mounted on this and then there is going to be a border that gets applied to the outside. And what we do, we're going to have a look at how we mount this down or you can watch how I mount this down and then eventually we haven't built any uh, spaces into this yet but eventually and the reason I'm getting this board up is because I want to see the alignment i oh, just got to watch the ceiling there a little bit cramped for space in this room so the map board itself is got their uh, corporate colors because we want to have the the yellow and the black in there to match to match the logo to match the cat logo so I'm just going to roughly position this because I'd like to get that on this board. We make our boards a little bit bigger on the base than the top and two sides. Some people uh, make them even all round. Yeah, this one doesn't actually have a plaque or anything going in it, but if you did want to add a plaque, you can either, or photos, you can always add it cut into windows around the mat board, or you can have the plaque on the mat, or the plaque cut into a separate window on the base of the mat. This one's quite large, like we have made this uh, frame on the large size, but that's okay, that's, that's, uh, that's a good thing. This board on the backing, I've got it a little bit long at the moment, so I've got uh, about 10 mil hanging out, but that's good. Um, it'll allow me, if I need to make any finer adjustments later on, I can adjust that and then come back and uh, trim that base piece off. I'm just checking centers because I'd like to get this. Yeah, that's nice. This was checking where it's going to go before we start fixing. Yeah, that's good. So I don't need this board for the time being. It's going to get out the way. Stand back up. With a backing board and we've got a little frame sitting there in the background so i'm just going to pin this down into place using the stainless steel pins i hang the board off the uh, end of the so hang the board off the end of the table so that i can get inside it and i think you might have seen i've just got my little uh pliers on my uh swiss army knife that i use but a little pair of needle nose pliers is quite nice to use with these pins because you can grab hold of the pin and use it to push it into the board quite close to where the pin is and that helps a little bit with preventing um, preventing the, the pin bending because they are fairly thin these pins and you do uh, you, you want the pin to bend on the back because we're going to fold it over, but we don't really want the pin to deform on its way through because otherwise it gets quite awkward, you can't work. And then I'm using a little piece of uh, a framers tape to just hold that back section of the pin. And this is where if someone was using one of the uh, plastic tagging, uh, like the price tag, they would pull the little price tag down and tape it on the back. Or if you're sewing, you could pull it in and stitch it onto the back. So there are plenty of options in terms of what you do to get the, uh, to get the piece onto the board itself. In this case, we're going to use, as I say, we're going to pin down through the, uh, through the board itself. look at where that other pin sitting I I just don't like how that one put a little bit of stress just on that point so I'm going to lift it up just to, and repin and that's one good thing about when you're um, if you're using things like pins 
or stitches, they are reversible. It's something that most people should think about when they're framing anything, that they don't really want it to deteriorate, but they would also want it to be able to have adjustment if someone else needs to get that out in the future. So I've come back in and put a couple of pins in there. This is just the pinning stage. So I'm going right through both the foam that's on the inside. It's actually a three mil uh, Art Care foam board. And that, um, that foam board in Australia, you can get it from foamboards.com.au. They do a lot of cut to size mat boards as well, things like that. You can always buy your, your boards um, as big sheets or cut to size. Now in this case, because I'd actually split that and put it inside, I'm going to put another couple of pins just through near the middle. And I just want to do that so that I can help hold those boards there, just in case there's any flexibility in the future. I think if I've got a pin in there, it's just going to give me that ability to help hold that central section down. If we had a solid piece, I probably wouldn't need to do that. But again, you can judge where you actually pin and hold the shirt into position. If I flip it around, I can get to the top here. I want to get in and put a, uh, a couple of pins up in the neck area just to hold that section down. Again, don't really want to see the pin from outside, so I'm putting it just inside the neckline inside the hem of the neck there. So just a bit of strategic pinning. Again, you don't want it to fall off, so you do need to put an adequate number for the weight and size of the jersey that you're working with. We always tend to probably go slightly on the underdone side than too many. And with most things that you're framing, the, the degree of hold that you put on a picture can affect how that, um, how that picture behaves in the future, particularly if something falls down. Like I normally prefer with a painting, for example, that the little hinges and things that are holding the picture actually give way. Sometimes you'll find with jerseys when they're framed, if someone's dropped, uh, dropped the frame, dropped it on, or dropped the broken the glass and things like this, sometimes the frame will actually come off, or well, the jersey will come off, I should say, because of the force causes it to be dislodged from the pinning but then that's something that can usually be replaced quite easily so I've just put a pin under in the in that neck and just under the under the chin sort of thing there I could put it on the inside I've kind of tucked it underneath the again underneath the hem so that the hem itself is going to cover the pin but that way I've got some more support just in this central zone. Some people would remove the labels by the way, like there are different, different, um, depending on what it is, like this one here, we're going to leave the label, the label on, but as it's tweaking up like that, we could either put a pin in there or I'm going to put a little bit of fabric uh, tissue tape in there. It's kind of the stuff that uh, gets used on clothing. Sometimes it gets used on the uh, on the red carpet to hold uh, people's dresses in place, which 
at various times have caused uh, embarrassment when the tape has given way. But uh, in this case, we can use a small piece underneath our, uh, underneath our label there to hold that label down. This one's not a signed jersey. Uh, there would be extra precautions that you may want to take if you are using uh, or if you are framing a collectible. This is a little commercial one. I'm going to actually put this uh, fabric tape in uh, under the, the label and rather than uh, pin it, I'm just going to use that little bit of tape to hold that. It'll still look natural, it'll move with the, the backing, but it just won't flip up. So a couple of pin, more pins to be going on with. I'm going to do something under these, uh, under these sleeves in the corner. We haven't fold that one over yet, but we'll be able to put a pin straight down. The sleeve itself is going to cover this pin. And often people ask, with the expense of framing memorabilia, with most things in framing, it is the labour time uh, to make uh, your frames. And even though we use a lot of good, uh, fast and high speed equipment, things like fitting and assembly and design, they're usually done by people. So you do pay a premium for having uh, a good designer help you with choosing your frames. So if you're coming into somewhere like us at Fix a Frame, we always tend to tell people the difference between you doing your own framing and us doing the framing for you is largely our time and our consultation because we try to uh, give you the frame that you like, make something unique for you, and sometimes it's a little bit better to pay just a little bit more to have something really well designed and well made for you than to say cut corners. But again, learning, if you want to learn picture framing, that's a great hobby. And uh, I'd much rather show you sort of correct methods to do picture framing because uh, it's better that you learn to do things the right way than uh, ruin your, your pictures or ruin things that you want to frame and keep for a long period of time. So I'd like to show you generally the right way of, of doing things or things that are not going to do harm to your artworks or harm to your pictures. Uh, by the way, if you ever want to learn how to uh, frame pictures, we've got a great basic framing class at pictureframeclass.com. Uh, you can get, uh, get training on DVDs, or there is also a, uh, a virtual uh, download nowadays. You can watch it online through a membership area. And also, that's also inside the Framers Club, which is another uh, picture framing uh, area where we've got an archive of years worth now, maybe five or six years of various picture framing content that teaches you how to frame all sorts of items. It's, uh, we've got a lot of very active members that are always contacting me and asking about different uh, framing methods and also sharing their own. Like a lot of people do many great different things. Like we've got, um, oh, now that's where, I'll just show you what happened. So you can see how I just bent that pin. That's the sort of thing where I'm not gonna carry on with that pin and I wasn't holding it close enough to the, uh, to the, end of it, 
And so the pins, you do need to, um, that's why I don't use a thimble. I tend to use just my little uh, pliers because I can get it held quite close to the actual end of the pin and then gradually work it into the board. Because yeah, the, 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 foam, the foam centered board is not particularly tough, but the matte backing that we've got there is, is tough. checking we got that one still going I thought I'd lost a little bit of content there but we'll we'll just make sure that we're, we're still going yeah sometimes the uh, even though we got some great high-speed broadband now we can always get um, a little bit of uh, frame rate drop yeah that's all good so now I've put pins in there, that's pretty good on that side. We're going to do this other sleeve, it's going to come in. I want it to be in similar sorts of spots. This is the thing about this, I'd like to make it reasonably symmetrical. Let's have a look at where that one sits. I might put another, it's funny where they, where they print or where they put the logo on some of these shirts is it's not necessarily the same from um, one side to the other even though you'd think the printing would be identical it's not always the case but I still want to try and get this reasonably symmetrical I'd like to get this pin I'm going to put it in through the, the fabric itself first and I bring it over a little bit because I'd like to get that relatively well lined up with the other side so it's looking symmetrical and again that's one thing when you're doing this you can take your time you can arrange it definitely if you're going into a picture framing shop if you're going into a custom framers you can ask them about how they're going to lay out your design. And this, you know, people do sleeves on these shirts in many different ways. Like if you look at some of the other videos we've got on the Endure Art channel, or if you've looked at some of the training that we've got going on uh, inside the Framers Club, you'd notice that we have, um, yeah, we have different, uh, there are different uh, styles that we use uh, depending on how the person wants that that piece to look and that's usually down not just down to the not just down to you if you're choosing it for your frame but uh, usually a good frame will help you come up with a design that's actually going to work with your with your piece and so yeah I'd, I'd always encourage you know you get that's what you get when you go to a, a, a custom framer rather than just trying it yourself. But don't be frightened, you know, you're best off if you want to have a go. I'd rather that you you did frame something yourself than say leave it tucked away in a drawer forever and not get the pleasure out of putting it up. You know, we, we see that where people say, oh, I've had this thing for years and I really meant to frame it years ago. Well. You know, now's the time to uh, to seize the seize the opportunity and get your get your things framed because it's no good waiting forever to 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 frame those things that you want to enjoy. Yeah, that's going to sit down there quite well. Like you, we've just done another one recently. Uh, that I, I did do live as well where we put pieces inside the sleeves of a t-shirt so you can actually use filler 
some little filler pieces inside these to hold them in position. In this case, we're not using any filler. We're actually going right to the, uh, just using the sleeve as it is in its natural form. Now that's pretty good. We could put some more pieces in there, but that is largely going to be held in place. It's not going to move. Uh, it's supported in several positions up under the, the neck in, in various locations in the sleeve. And we've got it looking pretty good. There's a, there's a little buckle here in this sleeve. Maybe, maybe I can bring that up. In fact, if I bring that up, I'm going to bring that up a little bit. And again, this is one of the reasons of using the pins themselves. I'll take off the little bit of tape I put on the back there. I'm just going to bring it up. I like, I'm, I'm just looking at that and thinking, oh, it's okay, but I think I can do it a little bit nicer. So I'm, going to just, I'm just going to bring that sleeve a tiny fraction up and it's just going to take out the buckle in, in underneath here. Like it could stick back there and take out the buckle, but I do want to keep it kind of symmetrical to this other side. So uh, again, play with it a little bit. Put it in there and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's really nice. So again, at that point, I've just taken out a little ripple out of that sleeve down in there, just so it sits really nicely. I mean, that's what you're hoping for when you get something framed. You do want to have a degree of refinement and elegance. You know, that is probably one of the differences between, say, going to a professional and doing it yourself, that it takes a while sometimes to actually develop some of the the flair for getting things looking great but you can do it so don't you know don't, don't let uh, not having a go prevent you from having a go really I'd like to uh, I'd like to encourage you to uh, to frame your own pieces and I'd also encourage you to come in and support the framing industry uh, a lot of picture framers they really, uh, they enjoy their job and they have a great time doing it and without having uh, good customers, they wouldn't really have much to do. So uh, please uh, support your, your picture framer. Now what's going to happen next is I'm just going to show you this mat board and we're going to have a look at how the spacer is made. And actually I'll put a backing uh, behind it at this point as well. We've got some... Uh, foam board backing and this foam is going to support the back of the, um, the big board that the jersey is being stretched onto and I am actually going to fix it in place with some uh, double sided tape purely because I'd like to add a little bit of body to the support behind where this jersey is going to hang the the, um, the the mount board itself is reasonably strong and tough and everything, but I'd like to actually have something there to give it some body, just so that over time we don't get a lot of buckling happening because the weight of the jersey itself could pull on the on the mat, and so I'm just going to put some strips of quite a substantial uh, double-sided tape here that it will hold that board to it. If you're doing it yourself, you could use a, um, a PVA glue if you wanted to glue it down. I'd like to be able to still get in there if I need to get the pins out. Uh, but again, the tape is going to give me that ability to, to get in there if I need to prise it apart but it's just going to give some support to that being quite a big, big jersey. And this backing is actually a 5mm uh, 
foam board. So it's got a little bit of body to it. Don't like using MDF, even though it might be useful for strength. If you have things that are weighty and you want a good backing, and you want something that's going to be strong for the backing, then uh, you can always use uh, Dye Bond. Very useful product. Having the um, having Dye Bond, which is a uh, aluminium composite panel. Dye Bond is a brand name, but aluminium composite panel is very useful for picture framing, particularly when you want to either mount photographs and you need the smoothness of an aluminium plate. But in something like this, or if you're mounting, say, cricket bats or baseball bats or guitars, anything that's got some weight in it, Dye Bond is a very reliable material in terms of, I'm just taking off the double sided there, um, is very reliable in terms of rigidity and it is fairly inert. So it's not going to harm the items that you're framing and it's going to give you a lot of strength that you can put into the, into the back to support things. So if the foam wasn't strong enough, dye bond or aluminium panel, or they do make various varieties of the foam board like something called Mighty Core and uh, also Gator Foam is used sometimes but that's they're a little bit harder like the Mighty Core is not that hard to work with Gator requires a little bit more uh, tooling to cut well um, so yeah if you, you but standard foam board is okay so I'm just going to pop this uh, this mat on on the surface and have a look again, make sure that it's all right before we flip it around and play around with it. Because the mat isn't going to sit at that level, but it's not sticking there. I just, I'd put some, uh, I glued these boards together earlier. This was actually too large. We couldn't get, um, we couldn't get the colour for this inner yellow in this large size, so we have uh, painted uh, this line with acrylic. So we've got a, uh, a colour colour match to help with matching the logo of Hastings Deering. We just really, in this size, the yellow just, we could have used a little skinny bit and kind of fudged it, but we'd rather use solid pieces of board. So uh, this a whole, Whole, se whole section and we've painted that section. You can always paint those boards with acrylics or watercolours if you want to change colour of your arrangement. So that's where it's basically going to sit. So on the back of this, I flip it over, you probably see some of the yellow there because we painted this one after we cut the bevel, although uh, we could have painted it first and then cut it, but uh, we just we painted it that way so there's a little bit of overrun with yellow but that's not a problem it's um artist acrylic and uh i can't even think we mixed up the color but they are light fast and they're not going to hurt anything so then what i've done i've cut a couple of strips this is actually 10 mil foam board but you could use pieces of 5 mil 3 mil any thickness that you need and what i'm doing with that is i'm going to use it on here to pack some layers up into the backing and we've got some that's going to go on the top and the bottom so we'll do the top and the bottom first it's going to go across and I've set this back usually the the rule of thumb is sort of uh, have the foam narrower by at least the thickness of the foam and then you won't see it from the front I've brought this back a little bit further, so I've got it sitting about uh, 15 to 20 mil back from that lip because I don't really want to see it there. And the other reason, uh, you want it reasonably close to the lip because you want to provide some strength to that thin mat board. You don't want the mat board buckling up because in this example, the foam is going to lift up 
the mat from the backing board and then we want that mat to remain nice and straight so yeah you don't really like if you're doing thicker spacing then this is this is sort of quite deep enough for this actual jersey but if you were doing something that was deeper you can stagger these layers so that you start off being relatively close to the bevel and then as you move backwards so if I was going to put another layer on behind this one I'd just bring it back a level so that these are like stepped backwards so when you're looking from the front you don't see these steps um, and that then also helps give you the reinforcement that's going to hold that front panel so yeah, I'll put the uh, the base piece on Again, I hadn't cut these to length I was just uh, I cut strips and then with the uh, with the strip itself I just cut it in down to size um, with one of the handheld knives notice we use those black uh, Alpha blades or the KDS blades from Japan or uh, there's a couple of other ones Ka uh, Kai cut very very good blades uh, it makes a difference to how long your blade lasts and certainly if you're doing a lot of cutting, particularly if you're cutting things like foam board, uh, you want a blade that's going to actually be strong and long lasting. I know that sounds like a plug, but you'll save yourself so much time if you uh, get good blades from the beginning. You know, you can get just normal, the normal steel blades after you've cut with these ones you start using one that's a plain one and you realize it's like sort of using a blunt uh, blunt knife even though they're brand new and sharp because these ones you get very used to how little effort is required to cut with them so yeah I would encourage you to get good um, good blades same with saw blades with cutting your frames you know the, the reason some blades are dearer than others is usually because they've got better steel in them it's the same if you're going to get some good uh, mitre cutting uh, mitre cutting blades that you um, that you use gosh let me just drag that back I think we just I, I bumped the computer there and drag my screen away but um, yeah if you if you're going to get uh, good mitre cutting blades like there is a company that I can highly recommend. We we buy blades. I've bought blades off them over the years, which is Tools Today, ToolsToday.com. They are fantastic. You can get some excellent uh, for the miter saws, the power miter saws. That is, they have the most outstanding uh, blades. Um, there are others, there are lots, you know, we have ones in Australia, people use, they're the, mostly the, uh, either the blades themselves come from Germany or Japan, Canafusa blades are always very, very good. A lot of people get used to a particular type of blade for cutting uh, picture frame moulding, because a lot of the mouldings themselves are composite type mouldings, they're combinations of timber, plastic, uh, veneers, uh, lacquer, paint, composition, there's compo that goes on to frame mouldings and not all blades cut, you know, if you just get a wood cutting blade it doesn't always cut some of those beautiful finishes very well whereas if you get a really very engineered blade for cutting you know, that have different angle rake in the teeth on the front of the teeth of the saw blade and different uh, rakers and things to clear uh, the material while you're cutting your picture frame cutting results will improve dramatically um, you know if you can't if you can't get a good saw or a good saw and a good blade to cut your own picture frames you know if you're cutting them by hand that's fine like a good uh, like a pro man hand saw will do the trick but uh, if you're a professional 
if you get a really like a good saw if you have a hand built saw like one of the ctd models um, coupled with a really good blade you're going to get great results but if you can't afford that and you don't want to cut by hand by all means order yourself a chop frame and chop frames are something that uh, there are some suppliers out there we, we sell some cut frames cut to size for people or go in and see your local frame shop even if you want to do it yourself go and say I'd like you to cut the frame for me uh, very often some of these even these big frame shops don't cut their own frames anymore they buy them pre-cut simply because they can't carry the entire range of frames so getting them pre-cut they allows them to carry more but apart from that they also get better results if they haven't got top end and I mean really top end sharp blades uh, you notice the difference immediately it's the same with most things if you have really good tools you can produce really really good results we like to think that we spend our time like we, we tend to cut our frames even a little bit slower even though the saws are running at high speeds the actual cut through rate varies according to the molding we're cutting itself like the stroke that the, the blade moves through with a power saw because that also can have a huge role in delivering high quality cuts that's going to take this double this is some double sided tape again i've just put it on here and this is to, to mount this down onto that backing section i'm going to flip it around i can't reach all the way across the table with the size of this one it's about um it's not quite 1200 but it is uh nearly 1200 by a meter this frame so it's on the big side without having other additional um without having other additional photographs or plaques or things in it it is on the big side for a, a jersey frame at least for the regular ones that we see but then this is to say it's a in our sizes here it's a 4xl maybe the guys wear a lot of padding under these when they're playing so they need to accommodate not just for the size i mean size of the kids that are wearing this one because it's actually a kid's shirt but not just for the size of the kid but the actual size of the pads that they might use so i'm just going to flip this over and we're going to pop it onto the, the matting on the top just make sure actually not that way the bottom we make ours a little bit wider on the base get that in position I try to move it a little bit while I'm actually getting it in position and that's a trick to involve to uh, prevent the adhesive that I've put on there from grabbing and sticking prematurely because I'd like to get that in lined up in position before I put it finally down onto the board And once I've got it in position, I can go around and push that down. Now I'd left this uh, layer just on the end hanging out by that few mils, and I'm gonna trim that off. I'm gonna just use the actual mat itself as a ruler in this case. So just gradually, I'm not trying to cut anything in one great cut. I think most people when they think about cutting these mat boards and things because normally when you cut a bevel in a mat you do have to cut it pretty much in one go to get a good result unless using some of the, the cutting some of the really thick boards you sometimes do it in multiple goes but when you're cutting something straight you do not necessarily have to cut all the way through that board in one in one actual motion because you don't you don't need to risk cutting yourself cutting the thing you're framing and moving off like you know if you move um, if you move off and actually cut into the board 
you've done the damage. Now you do want to go and check that everything's clean. So this actually at this stage, this I might give it a little bit of a blow just to get any dust off. We've got a little, uh, this is just a little air blower that's going to hook up to a compressor. So I can just use a little bit of air. There's just a little bit of dust down in the um, in the shirt. I'm not fitting it yet at this stage. I just wanted to give it a, a dusting off. I will do this again when I come to actually assemble it. And so we've made the space underneath this mat board so that it's lifted the shirt up off the backing. I'll put it this way so we can have it on the camera so you can see what's going on. And I'll lift it up on a little bit of an angle in a sec. Just going to clear some space. And in this example, they are actually matching another frame. They have a series as a corporate, corporate job where they use a brushed metal. It's part of their branding. And so this is going to have this brushed metal frame that's going to sit on the outside. So really when it's done, it's going to sit up like so. Now what I might do, I'm just going to bring this back up. See how we are there for, for height. Or maybe we can have it that way a little bit. There we go. So the next part of this is really, this is now ready just hold it up. I haven't put the, I haven't put any fittings in there, I haven't put any glass in there, but maybe we can just hold this to, to get it to that point. So at this point, you can pretty much see it like I, I've just hold it up there so that you can see what's going on. We've got our, our logo, our colors, we've actually got four mat boards. So this is floated on a black backing. It's got the gold and the black, which was prerequisite because of Hastings Deering. And then we've got an outer white mat, which is also in their logo and sets it apart from the, uh, the backing. And the white and the silver matches the existing frames that they have up in their uh, corporate offices. So when the next stage is we're actually gonna put glass into this and we're going to clean it and we're going to fix it up but um, really I'm going to do that I'm going to I'm going to grab some lunch and we're going to <laughs> grab something to eat because it's been a bit of a bit of a challenge to just keep going on it and uh, I'll uh, I'll fit this up afterwards finish it off and and how you go in some of the other videos you can see how we cut glass how we fit things uh, and again, if you want to learn, if you're serious about learning picture framing, go to pictureframeclass.com. If you're super serious, then join framersclub.com where you've got the whole archive of material. And if you just want to get something framed, come in and you're in Brisbane, if you're in Australia, come and see us. We're at uh, Mount Cravat in the Mount Cravat Homemaker Centre. Anyway, this has been David from Fix a Frame at Mount Cravat. Thank you so much for joining me today while I was just uh, framing this jersey. So I look forward to seeing you next time. We'll catch you then.